we're here for. Item six is an ordinance prohibiting the possession of tools of violence during a demonstration. There are 37 speakers on this item. Uh, good evening, committee members. My name is David Briggs. I'm an attorney. I'm here to speak against this ill-advised and incredibly poorly drafted measure. This measure would prohibit demonstrators from bringing water bottles. Actually, it would it prohibit them from bringing a plethora of innocuous items, many of which, if you scan this room, you will see. This is not the same ordinance that Los Angeles passed. Los Angeles barred wood items of greater than a quarter inch in depth or in thickness and two inches in width. This ordinance goes far beyond that, bans plastic items, no, it bans doesn't. metal items. It doesn't? No. Excuse me. Madam President, let me read the definition of a club. Club means any length of lumber, wood, wood lath, plastic, or metal. Unless that object is one fourth inch or less in thickness and two inches or less in width. So I believe you have been misinformed by the city attorney. I stand firmly against this proposed ordinance. It does nothing to address either of Oakland's two very large police problems. Number one being the continued violence committed with impunity by OPD against our neighbors, in particular young black men. What, what could be more important than justice for our people? Number two, protest by the people. And I actually do want to address the council and, you know, the objective of this ordinance as it's written is to make it safe for Oakland citizens to protest in this city where everyone is repeating we're so proud of our history of protest. And that objective, I think, I, that's an important one, right? But it's important because it is not safe to protest in Oakland because over the past seven months, protesters, including peaceful protesters, have been, as people are saying, tear gassed and shot at with rubber bullets and police projectiles and batoned and beaten and seriously injured. And OPD has arrested almost 800 protesters in this city in the past six months. So clearly, everyone agrees, it's not safe to politically protest in Oakland and to exercise your First Amendment rights to do so. On that, everyone seems to be agreed. Now, the point of contention is whether it's not safe to protest because of shields and spray paint or because of the Oakland Police Department, right? And the logic that, that shields make good, nonviolent protesters uncomfortable, maybe. But don't you think that hundreds of police officers brought in through mutual aid and full riot gear from eight in the morning makes peaceful protesters uncomfortable? Don't. Don't tanks driving through the streets of downtown Oakland make people uncomfortable? Doesn't the smell of tear gas at six in the morning make commuters uncomfortable? So. I think that one thing that needs to be recognized here is the anger you're hearing in this room is a result of the fact that we feel that the Oakland Police Department has attacked us with a military force that involves tanks and tear gas and riot gear and the response of the Public Safety Commission of our City Council is to ban our shields. Now, whatever we think about the argument, that's the emotion that's sitting here. That's the reality. That's our history of the past six, seven months, right? Now, many people are asking, what's the problem? What's the problem with who needs a shield? Who needs, you know, spray paint at a peaceful protest? 
Now, and one thing is, many people have, have pointed out, uh, David Briggs pointed out all the ways that, that this ordinance could be manipulated. It may seem ridiculous to you that we're talking about camera pods and water bottles, but it's ridiculous to us when people are given $100 fines for umbrellas through a manipulation of an ordinance against illegal structures. It's ridiculous to us that someone whose bike grazes the leg of a police officer is charged with felony assault. It's ridiculous to us that photographers are being chased down and attacked, even when we're told we have a freedom of speech and press. So many of you I recognize from um, back in 2003, Larry, Rebecca, uh, definitely Nancy, I don't know the name of the city attorney who was introducing this ordinance. Um, he introduced it as an ordinance for public safety and sort of uh, went on to say what a great history of peaceful protesting you had in Oakland. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's definitely not true. I was hit in the face with a non-lethal projectile as a peaceful protester in 2003. So in fact, what you have is a history of police brutality not just against political dissidents, peaceful protesters, but also against just the citizens of this city. So what we've been looking at is a pro process um, of protester profiling, and it's really similar to the racial profiling that is going on. And um, you have seemed to use Occupy as a scapegoat for a lot of the issues that are going on in this city. And again, there's like a historical precedence for it. But somehow you seem to find it more convenient to lay the blame on Occupy Oakland than either upon yourselves yeah. or the OPD. And so I guess when I, you know, as, as we're here sort of looking at public safety, I'm really curious, especially after last Tuesday's city council meeting that I was here and we heard the um, just kind of uh, heartbreaking um, sentiments of the Blueford family. I'm curious what the city council has done since then because it seems that you used a lot of energy to create this ordinance and some other ordinances and I'm not really sure what the city council is actually doing about the police violence in the city. And so Arturo, I see you sitting in the city administrator's um, seat tonight and I know that you represent the city administrator and so again I'm curious about whose role it is to deal with the OPD and to have some sort of oversight on the OPD and again I'm going to ask you as I did in your office last week is it your job? The ordinance as it's written speaks of tens of thousands of dollars in costs to the city. That's a lie. That's an outright lie. Protests in this city have cost the city tens of millions of dollars, not because of the protesters, but because of the police, because of the lawsuits, because of the settlements that you continue to approve and continue to have to approve because they keep doing the same things no matter what you do. You signed an agreement in 2005 that they wouldn't do these things and they've been doing them. They just keep doing them and you keep getting lawsuits. You speak you'd like to have more money. You could have more money if the 57 or 60 million dollars that you spent, you didn't have to spend. If the tens of millions of dollars that you're going to spend to settle with Scott Olson and Savon Kadegi and, and Alan Buford and all the rest that I've reviewed in the history, it's ridiculous. While, while we are speaking here, Alan's family is grieving. Tony Jones is paralyzed. Derek Jones is still dead. Scott Olson's image is now the image of Oakland all around the world. And you do nothing. You bring this silly ordinance to us when it doesn't do anything to address the problem. You need to hear from the people in an open forum about what can be done. You need to table this motion and hold a forum where people can present ideas on how to reduce the violence, how to, how to stop the, the ever increasing antipathy between the police 
and the citizens. That's what you need to do. You don't need to pass this ordinance. Thank you. I want to um, thank Councilmember Reed for facilitating the conversation between the Chief of Police and the Blueford family. I happened to be here last week when the Blueford family was here, and I had an opportunity to speak to the, to the father of Alan Blueford. I, I think none of us want to have the type of injuries that occur, and I know that I'm going to speak to you on a topic I've spoken to you before, which is the whole issue of budgets and what it costs the city of Oakland to have the type of behavior that's being complained of tonight. As someone who does criminal defense in Oakland, I can tell you that over and over, what I see from Oakland police on crime matters is that the police work is sloppy, that often the uh, pr processes and procedures that officers follow in OPD do not meet the standards of their own industry and their own peers, and that very often OPD's behavior lacks honesty and integrity, which sabotages cases. Now, yesterday I represented a young man named Michael Davis, and the charges were dismissed. This was very vigorously litigated, and you know that I'm a vigorous litigator. This required three days of preliminary hearing. Uh, the people who were arrested were in jail for over uh, 60 days between the three of them. When you consider the cost of $75 a day, what does that cost when charges are dismissed because the DA cannot sustain them based upon lousy OPD quality work? If you want safety in this community, you need to have professionals with integrity. What you're telling people is we want you to do and behave the way we tell you to behave, but we don't have to follow or model that behavior. Every time I come here, it's because you keep wanting to create more weapons for OPD, thinking that's going to improve their track record. It doesn't. What's going to improve OPD's track record and peace and safety in Oakland is a professional police force that models the behavior you want your citizens to adopt and that carries out their duty with neutrality and integrity so that they don't arrest people because they don't like them, but they treat the behavior as what they want to target. So a child drawing a butterfly on a sidewalk does not get targeted for vandalism, and neither does an occupier who's using chalk to write a, 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 a free speech statement. There needs to be equality based upon the behavior, not based upon OPD's political attitude toward the person, and that is what's wrong. <laughs> In December last year, I saw this asshole smoking a cigarette outside, and I'm like, what you doing for the community? He told me that he was going to get some black people hired at BART that's going to be young. It hasn't happened in East Oakland. I remember that. This guy right here, he comes out of here every other fucking month with a new ordinance saying, I can't protest doing this, or I can't be on the bullhorn doing this. And now I get on Twitter, and I hear that y'all trying to say that we can't have shields to protest. And I'm just kind of thinking in my head, I'm like, are we the aggressors or are they the aggressors? You know what I mean? And so it's like, when you take away the shields and then you take away our chance to like be on the defensive, all you leave is like for us to attack. You know what I mean? And so it's like, when you leave, when you push pit bulls and German shepherds and poodles, because it's all type of dogs in this crowd, you push all of us inside a corner, and we all know each other and we all friendly and wagging our tails and we bite back at the oppressor, just know you was a part of the problem. So if you vote yes, you're a part of the problem. Remember that. You, you know. You know. At the end of the Boer War, the British executed three soldiers for war crimes in order to keep peace with the Boers. What I am saying metaphorically is that some people have got to get fired or this is going to keep being ugly. Thank you. My name is 